Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you back and welcome. Usually what we do in church when we say hi to each other, we, we, we take a bit of time and say hello to each other and, and give each other a hug. I know it's impossible for you now to give each other a hug, but I will encourage you for those who are watching on YouTube, just put a comment there and say hi to, to everyone. For those who are watching on Facebook, do the same, please. And it's, it's so good to be able to, to praise our God and to worship Him and to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. I don't know how this lockdown is for, for some of you, and probably for, for some of you can be a struggle. Probably some of you are finding really difficult this time. It's quite a long time, seven weeks to, to be in, in, in our houses. But I just want to encourage you with Paul's words when we go through trials and problems. Paul says like this, we can rejoice too, wow, <laughs> when we run into problems and trials, or we, we, we think we can rejoice too when we are still in lockdown, for we know that they help us develop endurance, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation, and this hope will not lead to disappointment. I love that. I'm thinking our hope in God will never lead us to disappointment. We will never be disappointed when we put our trust in God, when we put our hope in Him. God is the source of our hope. So I want to encourage you this morning to bring Him your problems, to bring Him everything you are facing now, and put your trust in Him. Put your hope in Him. And let's sing these words together. I love these words. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Wow, that's so amazing. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Let's sing them together and let's believe this amazing, amazing truth. We are more than conquerors through Christ. Surrender. 
an amazing promise no power of hell no scheme of man can never pluck me can never pluck us from his hand till he returns 
or calls us home, here in the power of Christ, we stand, you and me. So, Lord, we thank you so much that we can stand in your power. We thank you that we are more than conquerors in you, Christ Jesus. And we can declare that, we can believe that. And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we want to, to continue to, to open our hearts to you. And we want to fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We want to turn our eyes. We, Lord, we don't want to be distracted by our circumstances, by our trials or problems. But we want to declare that you're the reason we sing this morning. You're the reason we worship this morning and we bring you praise. You are this reason. So we can declare, Lord, that with our hearts that we love you. We love you so much. You're the reason I sing. The reason I sing Yes, my heart will sing How I love you Sing this song from your whole heart And forever I'll sing Forever I'll sing Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. I come in simply city, longing for purity to worship you in spirit and truth only. Strip it all away till only you remain. I'm coming back to my first love. Lead me to where 
the reason. You're the reason I sing. The reason I sing. Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. And for Forever I sing. Yes, my heart will sing how I love you. Lovely words. Let's go back to the last to the last verse. I feel that we need to sing that verse one more time. Let's allow our, our hearts to sing that song, to sing these words, to sing this last, last verse. I come with a broken song to you, the perfect one. I come with my broken song to you, the perfect one. To worship you in spirit and truth, only you. Give me a child, give me a child like heart. Lead me to where you are. I'm coming back to my first love. love only you Jesus Turn your eyes.
is what we want to do this morning, and not just only this morning. We want to turn our eyes to you. We want to fix our gaze on you, Lord Jesus. So we praise you and we worship you. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. It's, again, a great time to bring our praise with, um, to God with our children. So boys and girls, I hope you are ready. This is a very nice song and we can, we can bring this song to God and tell him we don't worry about anything. But we pray for everything. The same what, what Paul says. So let's sing this song together. I hope you forget. Uh, you, you forget. <laughs> I hope you didn't forget the, the actions. And someone told us how do we know the actions because we can't see the, the video. But I hope, by the way, improve. Just um, make up. Make up. Do your actions. Try to, um, to create some new actions and whatever. Don't you worry about that. Uh, that yes, dance. You can dance at home with your parents. And, but let's believe this message of, of this wonderful song. Don't worry. Please don't worry. Even during these difficult times, don't worry for everything but don't worry for anything but pray for everything because God is in control and he's sovereign so let's boys and girls let's praise him together and bring him this song to Jesus amen Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning, everyone. Um, 
uh, I apologize for uh, those little movements of the camera during the song. I was trying to catch Nathan dancing, but I forgot the camera was already turned away from him. <laughs> so so uh, you, missed, you missed a real treat. Um, maybe, maybe someday we're going to catch him do that. Uh, let me tell you something. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that you need to see. But anyway, it's good to have you all this morning, and uh, I pray that as you have joined us, uh, you will be blessed. We want to turn to God's Word now, and we want to continue our, our um, journey in the book of Hebrews, and we want to talk a little bit about, about um, this amazing warning that the author of Hebrews gives us, do not drift away. And we're going to be looking at the humanity of Jesus and the reasons why we should not drift away. Um, if you joined us this morning for the first time, we'd love you to say hello, maybe comment on the YouTube video, maybe comment on the Facebook video, whatever you're using. We'd love to connect with you. We'd love to say hello to you. It would be, it would be very good. Um, just to let you know what's happening uh, tonight, I'm just going to put uh, the events on the big screen so you can see them. First of all, tonight, uh, Michelle and I, we're going to have another one of those lockdown conversations. Uh, last week, somebody asked us, uh, what would you say to your younger selves um, from a, a, a life point or, or ministry point of view? Um, so we're going to be sitting down together uh, t tonight, and, and we're going to talk about um, uh, a sort of what would we say uh, to our younger selves. Um, so tune, tune in with us. Um, uh, we want to have an honest conversation about um, some of the things that we have learned over the last um, 14 years um, in, in, in this church and uh, um, uh, sort of a 10 years of marriage. Sorry, I think I got things wrong. Um, I'm not very good with the dates, but I think, I think we're close. Anyway, I will have to ask her how long it's been, right? I think we're about 11 years of marriage and 12 years, 12 years in the church. Um, but anyway, I think I already messed up, right? This week, uh, we're going to have Back to Basics uh, on Tuesday, and then on Wednesday, uh, we're going to have the Bible study and prayer, and then Sunday, uh, the usual times, 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Now, I think that's all. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, if, if there are other things that you need to be aware of, we're going to make you aware of uh, throughout the week, so watch watch Facebook and, and some of the texts that you may uh, be receiving from us. Uh, just, just before we turn to Hebrews 2, let me just pray, ask the Lord to bless us. Um, then we're going to read Hebrews 2, and then we're going to uh, uh, look at what God is, is saying to us this morning. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your amazing grace and for the opportunity we have to worship together, to give you glory and honor and praise. Heavenly Father, bless us and keep us close to you. We thank you for how committed you are to bless us, for how committed you are to continue to love us and to offer us your grace. And Father, as we open your word, I ask that you will bless us abundantly. I pray that you will um, open our minds and our hearts I pray, O oh God, that you would uh, wake us up um, so we do not drift away from the truth that is you. Father, we ask your blessing upon your church, and I ask your blessing upon me, O oh God. Help me in all my weaknesses to honor your name, to be a, a faithful minister of your word. And I ask, O oh God, that as we open your word, our hearts will be lifted up, encouraged and blessed, convicted and built up, sanctified and transformed according to your purposes. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to open your Bibles in Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to read the, the, the whole chapter uh, now together. And... Uh, and then, and then we're going to talk about it. I'm reading from the New Living Translation in case you use a different translation. Hebrews chapter 2. So, we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard or we may drift away from it. 
after everything that the author said in chapter 1 about who Jesus is and what he's done, and the fact that he's better than the angels, he's much better than the angels, in the light of that, the author says, we must pay attention and listen carefully to the truth, otherwise we may find ourselves drifting away from it. For the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm, and every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished. So, what makes us think that we can escape if we ignore this great salvation that was first announced by the Lord Jesus himself and then delivered to us by those who heard him speak? Now, let me, let me stop here and draw your attention here to the fact that the author is speaking to the church and is speaking to believers and saying, it's not saying you, you are in danger of rejecting this, you are in danger of ignoring it. There are two different things, okay? So, we're, we're told here uh, um, that, that we should not ignore the truth about Jesus, the truth about the gospel. Look at verse 4. And God confirmed the message by giving signs and wonders and various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit whenever He chose. And furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world we are talking about. For in one place, the Scripture says, What are mere mortals that you should think about them, or a son of man that you should care for him? Yet you have made them only a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor, you gave them authority over all things. Now, when it says all things, it means, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. What we do see is Jesus, who was given a position a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. So what, what we're told here is that Although we were given everything, man has uh, got authority and dominion over everything that God created, that is man and woman, Adam and Eve, we haven't seen that yet fulfilled because of the sin that they committed that affected everything. But what we see is Jesus that has regained that authority because of his death. Okay? Verse 10. God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory, and it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. So now, Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. It's one of the reasons why we call each other brothers and sisters, because of Jesus because we share the same Father from a spiritual birth, from the point of view of a spiritual birth. We know that Jesus is divine. His nature is the same with the Father. We are children of adoption. It's not the same, but yet we are called brothers and sisters with Jesus. That is a wonderful privilege. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in him, that is, I and the children God has given me. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. That's all of us. By faith, we're all the children of Abraham. The children of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Amen. We pray that the Lord will bless the reading of his word in our hearts. Now, we started this journey in Hebrews 
uh, by looking at the purpose of the book. So we, we looked at the fact that this book was written specifically for the Jewish believers that were spread in, uh, throughout the Roman Empire. And uh, those Jewish believers were finding, it, were finding life difficult, were finding living out their faith to be quite something. First of all, some of these Jewish believers were, uh, were, were thinking about giving up on their faith. We're wondering why would we continue to believe in Jesus when everything we do in his name is so difficult. They were persecuted by their own uh, people. They were persecuted by the Romans and the Gentiles. And so these Jewish believers were fighting themselves uh, um, between a rock and a hard place. And they were finding it tough. And they were, they were thinking about giving up. Some of them have already given up. And others, as they were hearing the gospel, were wondering, why should we abandon our religion and our Jewish rituals and follow this Jesus? What is this, this Jesus going to offer us? So the whole book of Hebrews is pointing people to Jesus who is better these, these disciples and these Jewish people are encouraged to look at Jesus and realize that he is better. The salvation that, is, that he brings is perfect and eternal. These are three key words in the, in the book of Hebrews. It is Jesus is better. He brings a perfect a right standing with God. He makes us perfect. And, and, uh, and the life that he gives is eternal. And so, uh, the, the center of, of, of the book is chapter 12, verse 1, that we have been trying to, we have been trying to learn. Um, and let's, let's just try to uh, say it together. I'm just going to put it on big screen for us. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every way that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. And this is, in a sense, the, the, the central truth of, of this book. However, this morning, we want to specifically look at chapter 2. Um, in the book of Hebrews, there are five warnings. Uh, the first one is... Uh, contained in the first two verses of this chapter that simply says, do not drift away. Listen carefully. We must listen carefully so we do not drift away. The second one comes in, in chapter 3, do not doubt. Uh, the, uh, then the third one comes in chapter 5, do not become dull. In chapter 10, we hear the encouragement, do not despise and then in chapter 12, do not defy, do not refuse or reject. And all these five warnings are in relation to the way we treat the word of truth, the word of God. Now, obviously, in, in this chapter, we're going to start with this exhortation, with this warning, with this encouragement. Do not drift away. To drift away simply means to move slowly, to slowly move away from something that you once believed, or to gradually become distant or cold from someone after a period of time. Once you were very close, you, you, you had a, 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 a relationship of closeness, but slowly you become cold and distant. So, the exhortation comes loud and clear in the first verse. We must listen. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away uh, from it. To listen, that means that we take uh, uh, time and pay attention. We register what the truth tells us. We register what the Word tells us. So we must listen to what we have heard, Otherwise, if we don't pay attention, if we don't allow our hearts to register what God says, we may find ourselves slowly drifting away from it. I don't know if you've been into the sea or if you've been uh, in a place with strong currents. If you're not careful, if you don't pay attention, or if you think that you can relax, 
you can slowly be drifting away, drifting away from the shore. And before you know it, you realize you're far away. And you, when you realize that, it might be a bit too late or you may be too far. So we have this encouragement this morning. Do not drift away from the truth. Now, the point that I want you to understand before we talk about the humanity of Jesus is this. That the truth that we are talking about here is Jesus Christ. Remember what he said to Nicodemus in John, uh, uh, in John uh, 4. He, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And, and, and this is the, the, the important thing. Uh, sorry, in John 14, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said that to Philip. He, he said that to Philip. I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we got to understand that when we are talking about drifting away, we are talking about not drifting away from a doctrine, not drifting away from an intellectual understanding, but we are in danger if we neglect, if you, if you ignore what Jesus says, you find yourself drifting away from him. And this is the danger that the book of Hebrews is, is, um, is warning us about. How, how can you, you drift away from a relationship with Jesus? Well, simply investing in other things, focusing on other things, moving towards other things rather than uh, uh, Jesus. However, what I need you to understand is the, the warning comes with an explanation. Here is why you need to understand. Here is what you need to listen to. And, and because you see, all this, this encouragement comes to warn us, hey, listen to what Jesus says so you don't drift away. But if you have drifted away, here is an explanation of who Jesus is. So you can come back to him because there's always grace. There's always mercy and there's always a way back to Jesus. Whether you've drifted away a little bit or quite a bit, there is always grace. So chapter 2 comes with the warning and an explanation. Listen carefully to what the truth says. Listen to what Jesus says so you don't drift away. But in case you did drift it away, in, in case you did drift away, he, here is an explanation of who Jesus is and, and how he identifies himself with you. Here is an explanation of his humanity for you to understand that he knows about you. He knows the danger of you drifting away. He sympathizes with your weaknesses. And as a high priest, in his humanity, he's able to understand you, and therefore you should come back. That's God's truth. And the author here uh, brings a wonderful uh, uh, supportive, supporting argument. He says, uh, um, he says, God confirmed his word with what? Confirmed by signs and wonders and various miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it's not as if God is speaking, leaving us to a place of, of you got to understand this intellectually. No, he's saying, I want you to understand that I've confirmed my word and I continue to confirm my word through these amazing signs and wonders and miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you uh, 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 this, this very clearly. The fact that I'm speaking to you this morning, and I said this many times, the fact that I can preach in English and I can, I can minister in English and I can talk to you, it is a result of a powerful miracle that happened in, two, in 1999 that has enabled me to acquire this English language that I spent most of my school years to learn and I could not. But God proved His Word he has given me the ability and the understanding, and now I'm speaking to you and proclaiming to you the truth by the power of a miracle. So please understand, God has done that in the past and continues to do it today because it's his word. So the warning comes loud and clear. Do not drift away. Pay attention to what Jesus says. 
fix your eyes on Jesus. And now he brings some arguments to say, if you drifted, if you find yourself in that place where for some reason you have started to slowly ignore what he says, you started to look in other way, in, 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 in other parts, looking at other things, looking at other people, and slowly you feel yourself drifting away from Jesus, you feel this coldness. You know, whenever you drift away from a, from a person, the first thing you, you, you realize, there is that coldness. And so if you are in this place this morning, the author of Hebrews says, now here are some arguments that will help you understand why you should come back. The first one, in verses 5 to 9, we are told here that Jesus has regained the dominion of the creation, the dominion or the authority that man lost in the beginning. The verses that we, are, we read from verse uh, uh, 6 to 8 are a quotation from Psalm 8. And here we are, we are told that in the beginning God placed under our authority of all things, all things. And, and the Bible says here now, when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. He made us lower than angels. He gave us authority. But the devil managed to usurp that dominion, usurp that authority from us from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. But look at what we see. What do we see? We see Jesus. This book is all about Jesus. What we do see is Jesus, who was given a position a little lower than the angels. That means he became human. He humbled himself and became just like us. And because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. So when he died on the cross for us, not only did he accomplish our salvation, but he was able to take back what we lost in the beginning. You remember in the beginning of Jesus' ministry, the Spirit took Jesus into the wilderness. And there he fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. And at the end, the devil comes to tempt him. And one of the temptations, if you remember, if, if you, if you remember clearly, the devil comes and says, if you bow down, I will give you all these kingdoms, the kingdoms of the earth. Everything that you see belongs to me. You can have it. And, and, and Jesus said, it is written. And, and, and he brings the word of God because he knows that his purpose is at the cross. He's going to take back what we lost in the Garden of Eden. So first of all, take heart. Come back to Jesus. Do not drift away. Here is what he's done. Jesus regained, Jesus regained what we lost. The second thing that we see about Jesus in verse 10 to 13 is that once he died on the cross, he brought many sons to glory. He, he brought us into glory this is the amazing grace that we find in the cross of Jesus. Look at verse 10. God, for whom and through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory, and it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. Jesus, by his death and by his ministry, he brings us into the glory of God. He's like a leader bringing a crowd of souls back to God. And so now Jesus and the, the, and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. What an amazing truth. In his humanity, Jesus is our perfect leader. We are his brothers and sisters. He came to identify with us. That's why you should not drift away. And if you did, you should come back. 
You should understand the, the joy and the privilege He's restoring not only your relationship with God, but the dominion and the authority we should have over the earth. Then He's bringing us into His glory by calling us His brothers and sisters. From verse 14 to 16, we understand that he, by his death, he disarmed the devil. I love this. I love this. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So what we, what we need to understand that the immediate result of sin was death. And so by Jesus dying, he not only did defeated the devil on the cross, but he broke the power of the devil, and he broke the power of death that was submitted to the devil. And so now, we are no longer afraid of death. We are no longer afraid of the devil. One of my favorite verses is 1 John chapter 5, verse 18, that says, because I'm a child of God, the devil cannot touch me. We got to understand. And Hebrews is, is pointing out, listen, listen carefully to what he says. Otherwise, you may feel, you may find yourself drifting away. And if you did, here's why you should come back. He has regained the dominion that we lost. He brings many sons to glory. That's including, that's including you and me. And he disarmed the devil. So you should never be afraid of the devil. The Bible simply says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You should no longer live in fear of death, in fear of the devil, in fear of, of anything. You are his child. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that you should be arrogant and, and, you, and, and, and think that you can take the devil on his own. No, 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 no. Remember, our identity is in Christ. Outside of Jesus, outside of him, we are powerless and we're going to fall on our face every time. Romans 7, when you try to live your Christian life without the Holy Spirit, without the help that we find in him, we end up doing what we don't want to do every time. But if you listen carefully and you pay attention to what he says and you understand that our identity is in Christ, therefore, therefore, there is no fear. Another thing that, that, that the author says here Verse 17 to 18, which is an amazing truth. This is going to be a, a permanent theme in the book of Hebrews. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every aspect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. The word test can be easily replaced in Greek with the word, the word tempted. Jesus was tempted in every aspect of human life like we are. Jesus was tested in every aspect of human life like we are. And because he was tempted in the same measure, because he was tested in the same measure, he can be a faithful high priest, a merciful high priest. He understands, he can sympathize with what you are going through, whether it is temptation, whether it is mental, physical, or spiritual, whether it is a testing, mental, physical, and spiritual, no matter what you're going through, temptation or testing, he has experienced it. He understands. Therefore, he can be the merciful and faithful high priest that you need today.
Let me finish by going back to the beginning of the chapter. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard. Or we may drift away from it. This drifting can be so slow that you may not even notice it. But then one day you're going to wake up and say, why do I feel so distant from God? Why do, why do I feel God so cold? Has He abandoned me? This chapter tells you not at all. You've just been drifting. You've just been drifting away. And the moment we stop listening, the moment we think we know it all, the moment we think we don't need fellowship, the moment we think we don't need others, we don't need word, I don't need to read, I don't need to pray, before you know it, you find yourself drifting away. But there is always a way back. There's always grace and mercy. Why? Because Jesus has regained the, do the, the domain and the authority that we have lost. He brought many sons to glory. He, is, he has disarmed the devil. He has defeated the devil. And he can be sympathetic because he was tested and tempted in the same way as we are. So take comfort. Let me finish with the story of Robert Robinson. You may not be familiar with his name, but you may be familiar with the hymn he wrote. Come, thou fount of every blessing. Robert Robinson was saved under George Whitfield ministry. Later on, he became a pastor, and he was mightily used by God as a pastor. In, and in, the, in those amazing years as a pastor, he wrote these words. Let me read the first verse. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fi fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. You can Google the song, or you can listen to it. It's just a powerful song. However, not many people know that not long after he wrote this song, Robert drifted away. Whether it was the difficulties of ministry or whether it was the difficulties of life, he found himself drifting away. And as he was looking for peace, he started to travel the world, trying to run away from the truth, running away from the convicting power of God. And as he was traveling the world on a train, he met a young woman who was reading a hymn. She turned to him and said, I'm just reading this hymn. What do you think about it? This is an amazing hymn. And suddenly, Robert was faced with his own words. Come, the fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace, streams of mercy never ceasing. Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon in mount of thy redeeming love. He tried to avoid the conversation. He tried to escape. But this woman kept asking him, can you read this? Can you tell me what does it mean? Is it, is it amazing as it sounds? And then convicted by the Holy Spirit, Robert, Robert Robinson, in that train carriage, he broke down and he confessed, I've wrote this song. But at the moment, I'm away from God. I'm drifting away from God. And then that young woman pointed to the hymn that he himself wrote and said this. 
the streams of mercy have never ceased. And that moment, Robert stopped drifting. But these streams of mercy are still flowing. That was the day of his restoration. That was the day of him stopping, uh, uh, stopping drifting away. Dear friend, dear brothers, br- brother and sister, maybe you have felt for a while that you've been drifting. Chapter 2 in Hebrews gives us enough information about Jesus to prove to you that you can always come back. Look at what he's done. Look at the truth of who he is. Will you come back? Will you step into that place of restoration and transformation and let him reignite in you those flames of grace and mercy? Let him set your heart ablaze again and let your heart be surrounded by his grace and mercy. Do not give up. Run this race with confidence. Why? Because of Jesus. Strip away every weight. Even the sin that entangles you so easily and let's run with confidence by fixing our eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our salvation. Let me pray with you. And I'm going to say goodbye. But if this resonated with you this morning, if God spoke to you and you find yourself under the hand of the Holy Spirit, would you please message me? Let me know. Comment in the video and we will come back to you. I will phone you and we're going to pray together and I want, to, I want you to be encouraged and lifted up. This is a difficult time and this is the time when we can either get close to God or drift away. If you feel drifting away, it's time you come back because of Jesus. Be encouraged. He is merciful and a faithful high priest that understands everything that you are being tempted with and tested with. Therefore, be confident to approach him. He will not reject you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word and I pray that this morning you will be glorified and lifted up in us. Father, set our heart ablaze with the conviction of your Holy Spirit and give us the joy of the Lord. Help us rejoice in your grace, in your faithfulness, in your mercy. Help us rejoice in the finished work of the cross. You have gained, regained the dominion that we lost. Father, you have brought us into glory, and now you call us your brothers and sisters. You have defeated the devil. Father, you are a merciful and, and, and a faithful high priest that understands and sympathizes with our weaknesses. God, you have made all this possible through Jesus, and I give you glory and praise. Help us rejoice in the finished work of the cross. Oh, Lord. Receive us. Oh, Lord, we don't want to drift away. We want to pay attention and listen carefully to the truth that we have heard. Lord Jesus, build your church as you promised. Even in this lockdown, build your church and bring us to the closeness that we've had before when we first believed. I ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, may God bless you and give you a wonderful evening. And God willing, and by His grace, we're going to see you again tonight at 6.30 for our lockdown conversation about our younger selves. May God bless you and keep you.